the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're going to explore in a bit more detail relationships between tables. And this really all falls under the data modeling heading. And when we're talking about data modeling, we really just mean how our tables relate to each other. And if you remember in the last section, we created some unique columns, product ID, location ID, and then I've got my country ID all the way over on the end here to uniquely identify items in each row and also to keep the data set small to interrogate. So let's now take a closer look at relationships between tables and I'm going to show you some of the problems that can occur. Now before we get on to doing that, I can see something that I need to change. If I look in this date column, I can see that my dates have changed format. These were all in short date. And the reason why they've changed format is because of the last demonstration I was doing with regards to conflicts between UK and US format. So I'm quickly going to deal with that because it's very straightforward to do in Power BI. So instead of this format, I would like the short date format. So if we go up to the formatting area and click the formatting drop down, all I need to do here is select short date and it's going to change all those back to how they were. So now that we've done that, let's jump across to our model view and take a look at our relationships. Now, because we've added in some more columns since our last refresh, we added in all of those ID columns. You can see that the model has automatically been updated because I have auto detect relationships set. Power BI will do its best to map fields of the same name between tables. So for example, if I hover over this relationship, I can see it's mapped country ID in the countries table to country ID in the sales table. It's also mapped product ID in the products table to, and if I scroll down, I should be able to see this, product ID in the sales table. And notice that I also have another relationship here that links the country code in the countries table to the country code in the locations table. Now notice in the middle, I have a line that doesn't look like the others. And that is this line just here. Now take a look when I hover over it, this is actually linking or creating a relationship between the location ID in the locations table and the date field in the sales table. So something isn't quite right there. And the reason that we have a dotted line here is because this relationship is inactive. So solid line means that the relationship is active, dotted line is inactive. If I double click on this line to take me into the edit relationship dialog box, I can see the relationship set up here. But if I take a look at the bottom where it says make this relationship active, that box isn't checked. And that's because there is a bit of an anomaly here because it's linked date to the location ID. Now this is a simple fix. All we would need to do is map the correct field. So I can just select location ID and map that to location ID in locations. And then I can say, make this relationship active. But take a look at what I get. I get a warning message at the bottom that says, you can't create a direct active relationship between sales and locations because that would introduce ambiguity between tables, countries and sales. To make this relationship active, deactivate or delete one of the relationships between countries and sales first. So what does that all mean? Well, let's click on cancel. So basically what this means is that we have too many relationships that are in conflict with each other. So currently the locations table location ID column is trying to link to the location ID in the sales field. But what do we also have? related to this locations table. We have another relationship from the countries table that is linked via the country code. So if we take a look at the countries table, what we have here is the country code, the country and the country ID. Now I added a country ID column in here, but the country codes are also unique values. So effectively I could use either of these columns to link to other tables. I have a country code link between countries and locations, and then I'm trying to use a location ID link between locations and sales. And if we take a look at the locations table, you can see that I also have the country code listed here. 
So we basically have too many pieces of conflicting information going on. So what I'm going to do is with this connection here between the countries table and the locations table, I'm going to delete out this relationship because really you want your lookup tables all linking through to your fact table. And the fact table knows what the country code is because it's linked to the location ID in the locations table. So what I'm going to do here is right click and delete out this relationship. So now I just have my three lookup tables and all of them are linked to my main fact table. Now that I've done that, I can make this relationship active. So let's double click. I'm going to select make this relationship active. Notice that I'm no longer getting that warning message and click on OK. And I now have a solid line link. So basically that additional relationship that was linking country code in countries to country code in locations was unnecessary. And it was proving to be a bit of a conflict for Power BI because the sales table already knows how to pull that country code information because it's linked by the location ID. So just be aware of things like that because they can arise when you're creating relationships. So just be very aware of things like that when you're working in Power BI. It's always good to switch across to this model view and make sure that all of your relationships are working correctly. And if you find one that's causing a few problems, jump in there and fix it straight away. It's now time to talk about the different types of relationships that can be set up in Power BI. So currently we have our fact table, our sales table, and then we have relationships with the three dimension tables. And what you'll notice is that these lines that connect the fact table with the dimension tables have either a one or an asterisk at either end. So what exactly does this mean? Well, it's basically telling me what the relationship type is between these two tables. And this is what we refer to in Power BI as cardinality. So let's take a look at this relationship we have between the countries table and the sales table. So these two are linked by that country ID field. Now I can see that I have a one next to the countries table and an asterisk next to the sales table. And if we double click to open up the edit relationships dialog box at the bottom here, I can see the cardinality I have set. So this is a many to one relationship. And you can see in brackets afterwards, it says asterisk to one. So if we take a look at that, I have an asterisk on the sales table and a one by the countries table. So the asterisk represents many and the one represents one. So between sales and countries, we have a many to one relationship. Now, if you feel like this reads a bit backwards because it's more logical to say that, oh, OK, this is a one to many relationship, then you might want to reorganize the way that you're looking at your tables just to make this a little bit clearer to understand. So if I put the sales table at the top here and have all of my dimension tables underneath, that's a bit easier to understand. Now it kind of reads many to one. So what exactly does that mean? Well, in general, where you have the number one, that means that in the countries table, there is only one instance of the country ID. So if you're a member in the countries table, if we jump across and take a look at it, we set this up so that we don't have any duplicate country codes or country IDs in here. So there's only ever going to be one. Whereas when we jump across to the sales table, because it's going to use that country code column to look up the information, there could be many orders per country ID. And that is where that many to one relationship comes in. One unique value that could relate to many different orders. So that is the many to one relationship. And it's by far the most common one that you'll come across. Now, if we double click to go back into edit this relationship again, we can click this drop down and see the other relationship types that we have here. We have one to one, one to many and many to many. And the cool thing about Power BI is that if I was to try and change this relationship from many to one to one to many, it's going to tell me that the cardinality you've selected isn't valid for this relationship. So that's really good because it kind of stops me from making a mistake. It's just not going to do it. So I need to switch this back to many to one. 
Now, if I click the drop down, we currently have many to one selected, but we also have one to many down here. And if I choose this, it's telling me that this isn't valid for my data. Now, for some data sets, this will be valid because basically many to one and one to many aren't really all that different from each other. It just depends on which way you're reading the tables. For example, I could read this as one to many, or I could read this as many to one. So it's essentially the same thing, but I have a many to one relationship here because for the type of data that I'm using, one to many isn't valid. For example, there can't be multiple countries for one order ID. Each customer, when they order a product, they get their own unique individual order ID, and that customer is going to be located in one country. You wouldn't have the same order ID for customers located in other countries. Hence why we can't create a one-to-many relationship here. But for some data, one-to-many is a relationship that is available to you, and you'll be able to select it from here without getting this validity message. Now we have a couple of other relationship types in here. We have one to one and many to many. And I'm going to insert a screenshot just to illustrate one to one because I don't have any of those in my data. So a one to one relationship would be created if both of the fields on either side are unique. And a many to many relationship occurs when multiple records in a table are associated with multiple records in another table. And I would say that one-to-one -one and many-to-many -many are the relationships that you're least likely to come across when you're working in Power BI, but they are there in case you have a scenario that needs them. Most of the time when you're creating relationships as we are here between a fact table and dimensions table, you're either going to see that many-to-one or one-to-many relationship. The final thing I'd like to talk to you about in this section related to relationships is the cross filter direction. Now, another thing that you might have noticed when you're looking at your tables in model view is that each of these lines where we have our relationships set up have an arrow in the middle. And you can see that I have an arrow on all of these lines. So what exactly is this arrow? Well, if we double click on one of these lines to open up the edit relationship box, that little arrow relates to this section just here, the cross filter direction. And we have two options in here, single and both. So if you see just one arrow, then the cross filter direction that you have applied is single. If you set the cross filter direction to both, then you'll see two arrows pointing each way in here. So what is the difference between these two? Well, the cross filter direction really relates to the way that you filter your data. So for example, I have the countries table linked with the sales table, and I have a single cross filter direction. So what that's basically telling me is that currently I can filter on the fields in the countries table to produce a result in the sales table. And that would make a lot of sense. Most of the time, when it comes to your sales data, you use other parameters to filter. So for example, I might want to find out how many orders we've had for a particular country. So I could select the country code and it will filter in one direction the number of orders. However, what about if I wanted to do this in the reverse? So maybe I wanted to be able to select the order ID and have it tell me which country submitted that order. Well, currently I wouldn't be able to do that because I only have my filter set to single. So the filter can only filter one way. So let's look at an example of this. Now I'm going to jump across to my visualizations area and I've actually added in a couple of visualizations and these are just two tables. This one's a matrix table and this one is just a regular table. And in this matrix table, I'm basically displaying all of the locations, the categories across the top, and then we have the sales quantity listed below and the totals. And then in the other table, I simply have a list of all of the countries. Now, remember, I have my cross filter direction going from the country table to the sales table in one direction. 
So that means I can click on something in this country table and this sales table is going to update. So if I click on Austria, the table will update and only show me the locations within Austria. If I click on Canada, the same thing's going to happen. If I click on New Zealand, or maybe if I hold down my control key and also select Norway, I'm going to see those results. So I can see that my cross filter direction when it's set to single is working if I want to filter from countries to sales. But what about if I want to filter in the other direction? Maybe I want to be able to select a location in the matrix table and see the country that that location is located in. So if I select Copenhagen, notice that this country table doesn't update because I can't filter in both directions. So now if we go back to our relationships, if I double click on this line, what I could do is change the cross filter direction to both, click on OK. And after a couple of seconds, you'll notice that I now have two arrows as opposed to one. And if I go back to my visualizations, if I now select something like Berlin, you can see that that is now filtering and letting me know that Berlin is in Germany. So those are the two options you have when it comes to cross filtering. Now, it's also important to note that when you create your relationships, if you have a many to one or a one to many relationship, which is the most common cardinality you're going to come across, the cross filter direction is automatically set to single. So if you find that you do need to filter in both directions, make sure that you change this to both and then you shouldn't have any problems. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.